Hi, check out what happens when I move this lever. So yes, it opens the gate, but I've uh, talked about how to do that in previous tutorials. And in this tutorial, I'd like to talk about how to make the lever animation cooler. So you see there at the end, when I pull the lever at the end of the pull, it kind of has a little wiggle as it settles into place, making it look a little bit more natural, um, hopefully, in theory. So that's what we're going to be talking about how to do today. Uh, using animation curves. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and walk through my starting code. So there are actually two soft prerequisites. One of them is uh, this triggers tutorial where I showed you how to make a lever or other things uh, trigger a gate or other things. Um, it shouldn't be super relevant to this tutorial, but if you want to better understand um, all the code in this project, you can check out that tutorial. And then the other prerequisite is animation curves tutorial. So I made a tutorial all about animation curves going into detail on them. And uh, this tutorial should still be relatively easy to follow, but if you find it confusing, maybe go to that tutorial for some more details. Um, the only holdover from that tutorial is I pulled in this script called Step Tours, which is uh, the script I tend to always use with animation when I'm working with animation curves and it essentially takes in a variable and then takes in a target for that variable and then a step and it will return a number which will usually add the step to the current to bring it closer to the target. Hopefully that'll be pretty intuitive when we start using that. But enough about that. Today's tutorial is about making the lever animate in that neat way. And um, to start off with I need to go ahead and make an update to some code from the levers tutorial. So the levers tutorial used uh, this sprite for the lever where it had an off state and an on state. But for this tutorial we're going to need something more detailed so that we can like control the angle of the lever. So I have this lever parts where I have a front, a back, and a lever. So um, that's the first thing we're going to do, and this should also be a good opportunity to give you, get you familiar with some of the starting code. So previously, we only had set image speed in the creation event. Now we got to set image angle. I'm going to go ahead and set it to 20. And uh, for various reasons we're going to get into later, I also need to specify a start angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a start angle to 20, then set my image angle to that and then later we'll make sure that the image angle only applies to the lever portion of the image and not the front and back. So now let's go to the step event. Previously we would just toggle the image index, now we're toggling the image angle. So um, it would be image angle equals negative image angle. So if at first we're at 20, which would be like pointing to the left, then it would become negative 20. So got to replace that. And that's where I'll use this function to trigger any um, anything that depended on this lever, so like the gate. And then I'd set the gate to open or close depending on this image index variable. But now that needs to be image angle. So um, let's say image angle greater than zero. So that way this will also toggle when we do make that change. All right, now let's go into the draw event. So I'm gonna do use start sprite ext. Ooh. And I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in all of the basic variables, and then we'll adjust them afterwards. Okay, always a pain typing all of that out. So these are all the builds and variables corresponding to each of these properties. So I'm gonna have that three times, once for each of the layers. And by the way, we're gonna start by drawing the front, then we're gonna draw the lever, then we're gonna draw the back. Okay, so what do we need to keep in mind for these? Um, as I mentioned earlier, the lever is the only one that should have the image angle applied to it. So for these other guys, I'm going to go ahead and put in zero. And then I need to refresh myself on the frames. So the frames are front, back, lever. So if I go back to the lever, then I need to set the frames accordingly. So front is frame zero, uh, back is frame one, lever is frame two. All right. Um, this should, if I play it now, this should give us exactly the same effect as we had in the triggers tutorial. So let's see if that's the case. I need to set my starting room to something other than what it is now. 
but uh, all right let's try that all right so immediately we see that there is a problem here um, let's see if we can fix that so I need to change the sprite to the parts that's what I need to do let's see if that fixes it all right we're closer that's pretty close looks like we're still drawing in the wrong order um, okay so I actually want to draw the front last instead of first my bad All right, cool. So it may not look like we did a whole lot here, but the cool thing of what we did is now we've um, isolated the the lever itself to be able to be controlled by the image angle variable. And now that we can do that, we can do all kinds of cool stuff with animation curves. So, um, yeah. All right, let's make an animation curve. So this is the meat of the tutorial. I'm gonna call this anim lever. So. Um, we want to start at 0 and then at the end of the animation we want to be at 1 indicating that, that the lever has reached its destination. So I'm going to change the range which I found out recently. I can hold control and zoom. Yes I can. Um, and I'm going to set the lower range to 0. There we go. Alright, so the first thing we want to do with the lever is after it starts at 0 is we want to kind of overshoot our destination because 1 is going to be representing where our final position is going to be. So we overshoot, undershoot, and then we have a few more little wiggles at the end. Something like that. Then we want to make it smooth, and that's pretty much our animation curve. I might be adjusting the spacing a little bit as we go, but this is a good starting point. Hi, it's me from the future. I have GameMaker Beta open right now, and future releases of GameMaker will have uh, an animation libraries feature, so I quickly wanted to show you how to use um, use that for this case, in case you are also from the future. So we'd start off the same way as did earlier, where we go from zero to our ending point, which is about one. And then we can go into Bezier mode, and then we can choose between these presets. So in this case, it matches really well with the elastic preset. So you can see that's pretty much exactly what we want. So um, that's how you could do it in future versions of Game Maker. And if you wanted to add more like bounces here, you'd have to probably adjust that manually. Oh, and by the way, make sure you have this ease out selected, because otherwise it would look different. Okay, um, on with the tutorial. Okay, so let's go back to the lever. Okay, so for our logic here, I'm also going to expose an enabled variable, and I'm going to set enabled to false initially. So, um, so this will represent whether the lever is in the on or off position. It'll be like a more clear representation than just looking at the image angle. Um, I also want to set a variable I'm calling CX. So this is my convention for the X position we're currently on on the curve. So we're starting with an X of 0 and then we'll, we'll be progressing to 1 as we progress through the animation. Although actually we want to start the game with the animation already finished. So that actually needs to be 1. Okay, then let's see what else. I also want to say how many seconds a transition should take. So I'm going to call that, I don't know, trans seconds. Uh, we can make that one, but of course we can adjust that as we go. All right, that should be all for our initial variables. So now in addition to changing the image angle when we press the lever, we also want to toggle our enabled variable. And then here in set activables, it'll be much cleaner just to pass in enabled there. So um, this is our interaction logic. And then we need to have another section for our animation logic. Okay, so another thing we want to do every time we press it is we want to set CX equal to zero. And that's going to be making sure that we reset our animation. Okay, so now for the animation. So as we're animating, we're always increasing CX. So this is where that step towards function comes into play. So that's going to look something like this. So here we pass our current as CX. Our target is one. We want CX to grow all the way to one. And then uh, the step is a little bit trickier. Um, so let me just break this down. So we have trans seconds, the number of seconds we want the total transition to take of going from zero to one. Multiply it by room speed to turn it from seconds into steps. And then we do one divided by that because let's say this should be about 30. If we want it to take 30 steps to reach one, then that we need to move by 1 30th of a step every time. Make sense? Cool. Okay, and now we're going to do some anim curve logic here. I'm going to make that a to do anim curve. 
logic. I'll just skip that for now and add it later. Um, but then at the end, we're going to be setting our image angle. That's going to be the final result here. And we're going to be lerping it between two values, between the beginning and the end. So the amount we want to lerp by, I'm going to set that to CX for now. So remember, CX goes from 0 to 1. So 0 meaning that we are at val 1, 1 meaning that we are at val 2. Um, so let's figure out the start and ending angle next. OK, so right now enabled equals false. If we're, let's say we toggle to enabled, then our angle goes from 20 to negative 20. So if I set my target, if we're enabled, our target would be negative 20, as I just showed. So I'm going to say negative start angle. And then if we are not enabled, then our target is going to be the positive start angle. Make sense? Then our um, previ previous is going to be equal to whatever the negative of the target is. OK. So now we're lerping from whatever our previous is to whatever our target is by CX. And um, this should already be animating a little bit without, and then once we add our animation curve, it'll be spiced up even more. Boop. Boop. All right, excellent. So now we've already got it animating a little bit, and we're just passing CX here. So this would be as if we had made our animation curve have CX equals CY, where it's just like a constant slope. Um, but as you can see here, our CX does not always equal to is not always equal to our CY. So we want to make that conversion to make it match this curve instead. So let's go back to the lever, press F12 to clear everything. Now let's get CY. So um, the basics of animation curves is you're always going to essentially be using two functions. You're going to call one function to retrieve the channel you're interested in. Then you're going to call another function to get the corresponding y position for the x that you're interested in. So this is function we're going to use to retrieve the channel. First function is the name of your uh, animation curve. The next one is the index of the channel within the animation curve, which is 0. So we just want the first channel, which is 0. Uh, next, we're going to be computing the y position on the curve using an mcurve evaluate. No, wait, no, not exists. There we go, channel evaluate. So the channel is going to be the channel we just found, and the position we want to evaluate is going to be our CX. And then over here, we can put in CY instead of CX to represent our progress between these two variables. I think we're good then. Yeah, I think we're pretty much set. I mean, there's going to be some, it's probably not going to look great the first time around, but we'll play with it a bit. Whoop. Whoop. All right. So there's two things I'd like to adjust here. Uh, first thing is you can see it's overshooting a little bit. It's getting into that zone where you can kind of t see the different layers. Second thing, I think it's a little bit slow. Let's see how best to fix this. Hmm. Okay, so there's a couple ways that I'm going to fix this. Um, so let me go into the animation. Let's see, so how high does it get uh, at its highest? goes all the way to 1.4. Hmm. So it goes 40% past image angle of 20 that we have set as our target. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Let me make this slightly smaller. Let's make it like 3, 5 or so. And put that one a little bit smaller. Then we can make this one a little bit smaller too. OK, now let's go to our lever. So now it shouldn't overshoot by as much, but I think it's probably still overshooting. So I'm also going to change this angle here to 18. So that way, that gives it more space to overshoot because our target's going to be smaller. Um, I'm also going to change this transition time to make it half that. Make it look that should make it look a little more satisfying. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. You know, we can tweak it more, but I'm pretty happy with that. So that is how you use animation curves to animate your levers. Hope you enjoyed it. So this is actually part of a series where I'm taking uh, a basic platformer and I'm just like pumping it with as many animation curves as I can as I can think to add. Um, so I'm going to be kind of walking through a bunch of different use cases there, and maybe some of them will surprise you. Maybe it's some cases that you wouldn't have thought that animation curves would have been an option. Another thing I'm doing in this series is um, at the end of every vi video, I'm going to mention an animation principle. So every aspiring animator learns the uh, 12 animation principles as one of like their first animation 101. So 
um, animation curves seem like a good time to talk about these. So uh, today's principle is called follow through and overlapping action. So when we animated this lever, we didn't just make it like hit its target and then stop. Um, when when things are moving naturally, they have momentum. They tend to go past their target, which is what we're having here. It's following through, going past, and then it's kind of resetting and then ending up on its final position. Uh, for more um, details on uh, that principle and the other principles, um, Alan Becker made an excellent series going through them, so uh, I'd recommend you check that out for more information. Um, aside from that, I hope to see you in my future animation curve tutorials, and uh, thank you for joining me for today's animation curve tutorial. I'll see you next time.